Rogers drums with Swivomatic. Rogers drums with Swivomatic. I hear this question all the time. What is Swivomatic? Well, Swivomatic is really just a title devised by marketing genius Ben Strauss that eventually became a bit of a blanket moniker for everything from bass drum pedals to throw off strainers, etc. What it originated as was a ball and socket joint that was applied to everything from tom tom holders, cymbal tilters, and even field drum leg rests. This all-directional ball and socket idea, though commonplace in today's drum hardware industry, in 1959 was the first of its kind. First revealed in the Rogers 59R catalog, Swivomatic revolutionized the drum industry and changed the way percussion components are mounted to this very day. This ball and socket joint patent was filed on March 17, 1959 and granted on October 23, 1962, assigned to Josephus B. Thompson of Covington and Joseph E. Whitenack of New Carlisle. Let's hear a bit from Ben Strauss on the development of this ball and socket that gave birth to the name Swivomatic. Joe and I sit there sometimes till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and talk. Joe would be working and we'd be talking. So there's nothing new really about a ball and socket that's been around for centuries. And so Joe came up uh, with an idea that ball and socket would be fine if we could get it to hold. When you wanted something to really hold, it had to have enough resistance that wouldn't let go. So. Joe came up with the idea of making the ball egg-shaped. Let's pause Mr. Strauss right there for a second. He mentions the ball being egg-shaped, which piqued my interest and led me to investigate. I opened up a few of my Covington-era Tom holders to expose the ball. I tried eyeballing and even took out a micrometer and took measurements. I couldn't find any hard evidence that the ball is indeed slightly egg-shaped. Measurements did vary, and if you really examine the ball, it does indeed look to be ever so slightly taller top to bottom than it is around the center band, which the patent calls the equatorial recess. While we have these open, let's go over the parts as stated in the patent. This being the ball and socket cage. This the cylindrical base attached to a dependent post. And this the ball and mounting post. I'll attach a PDF copy of the patent in the description below. I highly recommend checking it out. Fantastic information. Carry on, Mr. Strauss. You put it round and against round, nothing will ever hold. It just won't hold. Because we found that out in all kinds of holders. You have round against round, eventually it works itself loose. So by building this egg shape and putting these tension, little tension screws slightly above center, it pushed the ball down into a pocket. The minute you put the two set screws on it, push it against the wall and into a pocket. No way could you move it. Excuse me briefly, Mr. Strauss, but I'd like to talk about set screws. I have a video from a while back on this topic that I'll link at the end, but let's go straight to the patent. The United States Patent Office ball and socket joint document reads, Two set screws are positioned 90 degrees apart and act to push the ball against the side of the cage opposite them, which reacts as a third contact point so that a third screw is not needed. So we figured you would make it for a, left, for a right handed drummer, and if he wanted to, if he's a lefty, he could turn it around, so we put four holes in there. The biggest mistake we ever made. People would call up and say, hey, you shorted me two screws. Uh -huh. And I'd say, no, we didn't. Yes, you did. There's four holes in there. I only got two screws. I said, but you couldn't even get into the other two. I'd tell you the reason for that is if you turn it around, you take these two screws and put it there. It wasn't necessary. We should have never put it in. You know, you don't always do everything right now. Ben Strauss in that clip speaks about people misunderstanding how to use the set screws. Unfortunately, that carries on to this day with many using more than two set screws and often over tightening them. I find that about 90% of malfunctioning Swivomatic parts are due to human error, which leads me to another part that eventually changed due to consumers probably misunderstanding how to use it. This is all part of this. Mm -hmm. Again, this idea went into this. Instead of having a straight rod here, we came out with an angle. And on the tom-tom, we had a straight plate not an angle. Right. Again, 
basically the same plate, except we put it in a we put it in a in a uh, press and put punch the angle in it. And when we first started, this was all steel. Being discussed in that clip are the collet plates that accept the hex rods. The original version of the collet in the late 1950s was designed for the corners of the hex to fit into the grooves of the fingers as shown by this graphic. Also seen here in this photo. There are small V-shaped channels etched into the fingers which accept the corners of the hex beautifully. A wonderful idea and extremely sturdy, but possibly slightly over-engineered because by the very early 1960s the design changed to where the corners of the hex fit into the spaces between the fingers probably once again because of it being misunderstood. The difference shown in these photos. With Swivomatic, Rogers succeeded in their quest in bridging the gap between the drum manufacturer and the player. They achieved their goal of developing drum hardware that offered ultimate versatility and accessibility, giving the player nearly unlimited options in a time when options were extremely limited. This includes, of course, the famous cymbal tilter, as well as many style of tom arms offered. You could finally play away on your cymbal and drum without worry. This graphic even shows a player carrying his drums with confidence due to, and again I quote the patent, the ball being made of softer metal than the lock screws can be penetrated by the hardened points of the screws, thereby assuring retention of the ball at the desired position under the most severe condition of vibration and shock. Where I don't recommend carrying your drum by the Swivomatic mounts, I do know that when you own a Rogers drum of this era, you own some of the best mounting hardware ever made. I hope you enjoyed this look into Swivomatic, and I also hope the question from the beginning of this video was answered. Here's a link to the set screw video mentioned, and over here, part one of the Ben Strauss interview you saw pieces of. Check out some other Rogers related videos as well. As always, check out the channel. Lots of Rogers content being uploaded. Thanks for watching and be well.